Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the build. So today what we're gonna be doing is getting some lights hooked up on my cluster. So what I already have kind of half-assed wired in on this side is <sighs> check engine light and they're just pushed into this connector here. So I got the check engine light the alternator, well actually that's not for the dash, but we still gotta wire that. Um, and then there is the coolant to cluster. That is, this is actually the factory wire off of the coolant sensor for the Volkswagen. And I'm wiring that straight into the wire that originally came from the Toyota sending unit. And it's actually pretty close to the same uh, temp. So the gauge reads fairly accurate. So there's that I got to wire in, and the tack, which I have a converter for it, so I'm going to try that out, and the glow plug light, which is, do, do, where, uh, somewhere in this mess, there's a glow plug light, um, anyway, I'll find that. Um, so, what I'm doing is, for that glow plug light, there's a bunch of bulbs and lights already in this cluster that aren't used They're, I mean, this is a They say have the same cluster for automatics and manuals, so they have a lot of the automatic transmission lights in here But they actually don't have any wires in the connector Because um, I, I earlier I tried to tap tap into one of those wires and there's nothing in those in the connector So I went to the junkyard and I just snipped this out of a forerunner, and I believe they're the same pin. I'm gonna stick one in there, and make sure they're they actually are the same. But so I'm just gonna pull one of these. I already got one out. I'm gonna pull that out of the harness and find a bulb I want to use for that glow plug light. Stick that wire in there, and then all I gotta do is just connect the other side of this to the glow plug wire coming out of the ECU. So fairly simple um, so I'm gonna rip this cluster out figure out which bulb I want to use and we can stick that pin in there and see if it works so to find out which bulb you want just pull these out pull the bulb itself out and you can look through like that one shows back door so you can see through if you hold it up to a light you can see through and see what the bulb says or what the cover says so there's back door that's for a forerunner there's DF or overdrive off, so that's for auto. So you can really just pick any of those bulbs that aren't being used. And the easy way to find out which wire it goes to is just take a, take a multimeter, stick it on continuity, and then just pull your bulb out. and stick one side so these are most of these bulbs are ground triggered so one side is going to have power at all times and then um, the other side provides the ground to activate the light so like glow plug light the ECU will activate the ground on the side that I'm actually wiring um, so that's the side you want to check for the other side is is power and it powers a lot of the other bulbs so and it's it's a common so you can like follow it and it'll hit this one and that bulb that bulb that bulb so you can kind of follow the the run here and, and see where it goes but usually the bottom is the power the top is the signal or the ground so just stick one lead on there and then just follow it up or you don't even need to follow it, just uh, run your other lead across these pins here. And you can see this pin, this one runs up over to here. So then you'll just make a note of where that is, second one over, and then just go look at your, your harness. And 
uh, see what wire it is and it's most likely empty so that's why we got these pins so we'll stick that pin in that in that place of the connector in the truck and then just wire our solder this to the other side of that glow plug light coming from the Volkswagen ECU and should be good so I must find a bulb I want to use get this pin in there and see if that bulb works with uh, for the glow plugs all right we got uh, that wire just kind of temporarily hooked up here so that yellow runs up to that one plug in and I'm actually going to use that back door bulb so let's try this thing out all right boys here's the test so I actually unplugged the shut that thing up I unplugged the coolant temp sensor so it will stay on for its full cycle since it's warm in here um, if you have that plugged in and it's warm it'll it'll run for like a second or two so unplug your coolant temp sensor and let's see if my bulb works hell yeah there we go back door so that's a glow plug light and you'll see see if it'll turn off there we go so that is done so this is the this is the connectors I used if you guys need any of these hit me up um, I'll send you uh, a pin if you need they're kind of a pain to get you had to go to the junkyard I actually could find them online so unless I guess if you know what they're called but they're kind of a special pin because they they connect to that band in the uh, cluster it's not just a regular pin so if you need any of these hit me up I'll save these for you guys if you want them first one I'm gonna be doing is this purple here so this purple is from the original Volkswagen um, coolant sensor on the back of the engine um, so this is the originally went to the cluster for the the coolant temp gauge on the Volkswagen so I'm going to be wiring that directly into the water temperature light from the Toyota side so that originally went to this sensor here but I didn't feel like adapting this anywhere so I'm just going to use the original Volkswagen wire and it actually um, it actually is pretty accurate to the Toyota so that's good so yeah I'm going to cut these wires and solder them and then we can move on to the next one we got like I said we got the check engine light the water temperature um, the glow plug light and then we still got to permanently solder in the alternator wire um, and the tack so I'll show you guys what I'm doing with the tack it's uh, I bought a converter for it so we're gonna see if that thing works Here's the uh, parts I got for the tack. So this is a converter to, to convert my signal from a four-cylinder to a six-cylinder tack, because um, that was originally a V6 truck. So that will do. It'll switch the ratio, and then he also sent me this, which is you can see here. It goes from a coil-driven tack to a, a square wave signal to power for the uh, Volkswagen ECU so he said I may not need this um, he said just uh, hook this up first see if it works if not then I'll wire that in so I'm gonna give that a shot and this is all from fast forward um, he's pretty good with this kind of stuff so figured I'd try it out so I'm gonna get that wired in and see if the thing works all right we got the uh, that little converter wired up so I just use for my power you got to hook into a switch power and I found another wire <coughs> Sorry found another wire coming out of the Toyota harness that has switch power So I got that hooked up and then for now I just grounded a wire there and then they're just the input and output so 
let's uh, fire this thing up and see if that tack works. Um, according to my research, you need that other that other converter, but he said to try it like this, so let's do it. All right, guys, here it goes. So it's flashing at me right now, um, but we'll see what it does once I start it. Yep, we ain't got a ain't got a tack, so I'm gonna wire in this other converter, and I hope we get a tack. All right, we got this other uh, converter in. So you basically wire it. The input from the ECU goes into the first one we did. The output of that is the blue that goes into the input of this converter and then the output of that converter feeds the tack so this is my tack wire here um, so let's try it again and see if we got a tack that way and then obviously <coughs> you power and ground that one too so we'll get her uh, started up see if it works all right boys round two let's see if this thing will work Look at that, we have a tack. Hell yeah. Sweet deal. So yeah, tack works. Um, I'll have to check on my VCDS and it looked like it was pretty accurate. Um, well, once it's warmed up and everything, it'll probably drop down, I think it's 903 is the idle speed, but it's cold right now, so I had a little higher but it works so i'm going to get that thing get those converters permanently wired in and just tuck them up here somewhere um and so yeah that's uh that's what i got so <clears throat> hit up fast forward automotive he's in canada and so i there was something on here Right here, if you have a Focus 84 to 89 with a 22 RE, you have to swap out a resistor in the uh, cluster, um, but apparently not on the V6. So we'll get that wired in permanently and get the glow plug light wire run through the dash, get that soldered in. All right, we got all this power uh, trimmed down and Resoldered back in so there's the red joint <clears throat> There's the purple and the yellow so Just simple to do you just cut it route it where you want it solder it back in. That's all the wire. I took out that piece and Then all that and actually that brown connector has another wire It's the purple with white that wire is for the glow plug relay so you'll have to cut that out of the connector and just solder that. Next thing we've got to do is loom all this wiring. So I'm just going to start here and work my way to the ECU. Um, so I'm just going to use the same uh, wiring loom stuff and then that Tessa tape. So let's get after it.
right guys, after much trouble, I'm kind of semi-happy with how this <coughs> ECU is mounted. Um, I originally had it mounted on the original bracket and I cut this up and I made it fit. But that was before I had everything loomed and now it doesn't fit very good like that. So I'll show you guys what I have now. It's not actually mounted salt like it's basically it's basically held in by the panel. Um, once you pull the panel off it's all loose, but it doesn't move around when this panel's on, so I think it should be okay. So that's how it is. <coughs> I just kind of got to hold it tucked up in there and then put that panel on and all this wiring. I mean, this such a small area. Um, it's really been uh, kind of a pain in the ass to get it to, to fit here, but I got it to work, so I guess that'll have to do the job for now. Um, so that that wiring should be good to go. I loomed all this wire over here to there and then up in the engine bay I still got to run some of these wires tie all this up in a in a neat manner and put my little distribution box back in and we should be pretty much good to go for the wiring um, so yeah, it'll look a little bit cleaner once I get all this stuff tied up and this goes to the tranny so I gotta run that down down to the tranny and then all this goes into the distribution distribution box so that should work for now and then I gotta find some sort of a grommet to go in that hole there to keep those wires from rubbing so I'll have to f figure something out for that but uh, it's been a been a uh, long few weeks working on this wiring and I think I'm finally happy with I really wanted I really wanted that ECU mounted solid but I don't really see a way of doing that in such a small area here so that's gonna have to do the job so one of my biggest biggest things I wanted was the instrument cluster to work every gauge every light and I have accomplished that. We got tack, oil pressure, water temp, volt, the uh, fuel level, and then we have battery light, we have glow plug light, check engine light, and everything's functioning. So that was a big, big uh, plus for me. That's something I really wanted. So I'm glad we got that figured out. All right, this wiring is done. Um, the only last thing I need to do is figure out a cover for this because the stock cover doesn't have enough room with this third relay in it. So I'm going to have to cut something up and make something work there. But everything's routed where it should be. Everything's tied up nice and neat. And it doesn't look like a cluster mess of wiring. So that was one of my biggest things I wanted was uh, keep it nice and clean looking. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys are enjoying this content. This thing's going to be uh, driving soon, so we just got a couple other things to figure out on the truck. Uh, we got drive line, um, and then just kind of button up a few other things, and then we should be able to drive it. So I hope you guys are enjoying all this content I'm putting out. Um, hopefully it's helping you guys out. So stay tuned for the first drive video. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one.